click here to subscribe our channel and do not forget to press the bell icon to get regular updates of our videos. Hello friends, good evening to all of you. I am back with another video on sociology optional subject for UPSC CSE mains examination. In this video, we are going to cover the non-positivist methodologies under sociology of science. So friend, please do this triage, share as much as possible so that more and more people will get benefited. Comment and like the video and ask any doubt if you have. And now you can also follow us on MB page that is facebook.com slash unorthodoxacademy. So friend, in this video, we are going to cover the non-positivist methodologies under sociology of science of paper 1 under slot 2 that is autonomous topics. So friend, we are going to understand three non-positivist methodology. The first one is symbolic interactionism. The second one is phenomenology and the third one is ethnomethodology. So first we consider the symbolic interactionism. So the word symbolic interactionism can be divided into three parts. The first one is symbol, the second one is interaction and the third one is ISM. So basically the symbol means the set of objects, gestures, oral and non-oral which carries a common meaning for all the members of the society. The second word is the interaction which means the exchange of feeling and needs between two or more persons. And the third word is the ISM that is the perspective to understand anything. For example, if we considered Gandhism, then in Gandhism we see the world through the eyes of Gandhi that is the non-violence. So the symbolic interactionism is a major perspective used in social psychology but later it was introduced in sociology by Elvin Small but G. H. Mead, C. H. Kule, Herbert Bloomer popularized this perspective. And the symbolic interactionism is a method of interpretation which believes that society interacts through symbols. Symbol is a subject or object which carries common meaning for all the members of the society. It may be verbal, non-verbal or pictorial in its nature. So the Elvin Small believed that every social structure, its institutions like family and marriage and the pattern of interaction is developed around certain symbols of the society. Sociologists working in this tradition have researched a wide range of topics using a variety of research methods. However, the majority of interactionist research uses qualitative research method like participate observation method and notion. Symbolic interactionist studies are mainly found in the areas of personality, socialization, deviance, etc. Chicago School of Sociology is mainly famous for this approach. This perspective is more popular in American sociology, but it is also used in the Western social sciences. Basically, symbolic interactionism emphasizes on the micro relationship of social life. The basic idea of this perspective is that social reality is constructed one that is the result of human interaction as which is manifested by the use of signs and symbol. Meaningful words and gestures constitute the world of symbol for human society. Methodologically, it promotes a naturalistic approach. Interacting individual in that natural environment constitutes the scope of a study for researcher and in this way, symbolic interactionism also resists any tendency to bring in preconceived notion about some free following social interactions. The entire theoretical approach of symbolic interactionism advocates an inductive quantitative method of study in micro social situations. The core idea of symbolic interactionism can be traced back to C.H. Kule in his theory of looking glass self but later it was developed by Herbert Bloomer and G.H. Mead. Herbert Bloomer organized ideas and presented an organized body of symbolic interactionism as a perspective Whereas G. H. Mead in his theory of I and me took into the next level. In his theory, he represented how self develops in the surrounding of the society in which individual interacts through their signs and symbol. Later, many sociologists like Erwin Goffman, etc. also carried their study through this perspective. So this perspective was criticized for the following reason. The first one is that symbolic interaction do not understand the structure of society in general. The second, it is popular for micro social research and do not develop macro social perception. And the third one is that symbolic interaction cannot lead to general understanding of society. Rather, it is compatible for group studies or basically the micro studies. So later it has been realized that this perspective is good for the micro studies and is not capable of understanding the entire society as a whole. It is a micro perspective and it is still used for the study of deviance, socialization, personality and etc. Now we consider the phenomenology. So this perspective primarily belongs to philosophy which was introduced by Edmund Husserl. 
In philosophy, the aim of phenomenology is to study human phenomenology without considering question of their cause, their object reality, or their appearance. But in sociology, phenomenology was introduced by Alfred Schultz, who believed that social phenomena are interpreted through the dimension of human experiences. Schultz relied upon the anthropological studies which he believed primitive man has attached their subjectivity with the social phenomena which transformed into different social systems. So basically it is a distinct philosophical method in which researcher tries to understand why one society practices different beliefs, method, institutions, practices, etc. It believes that every social institution or practice are different than each other because every society is developed in different surroundings. With every phenomena which occur in society, the members attaches a different meaning with the phenomena and accordingly they develops a response in the form of social institutions, rituals, customs and tradition etc. Husserl believes that to understand every social order objectively, it is important that the sequence of phenomena must be understood in which those responses is developed. Phenomenology emphasizes that our perceptions are influenced by memories, conscious experience and recollection. According to Schulz, all of these impact upon our ways of perceiving social situations and other past experiences, moreover allows us possibly our future course of action in everyday world. Phenomenology as an extreme micro perspective in sociology is concerned with the organization of everyday world. So phenomenology believes in experience or cognition. Phenomenology seeks to understand how person construct meaning and intersubjectivity. Our experiences of world upon which our thoughts about the world is subjective and it is the root of all human action. Hence interpretation and subjectivity attached with the social phenomena should be understood by sociologists to understand customs, tradition, institutions and social organization of any society. So to phenomenologists it is impossible to measure objectively any aspect of human behavior because human makes sense of world by categorizing it. Through language, they distinguish between different types of objects, events, actions and people. For instance, some actions are defined as criminal and others are not. Similarly, some people are defined as criminals while others are seen as law-abiding. So the process of categorization is subjective in nature. It depends upon the opinion of the observer. Statics are simply the product of the opinions of those who produce them. Thus, the police and the courts produce crime statics and they represent no more than the opinions of the individuals involved. If sociologists produce their own statics, these too are the result of subjective opinions and in this case the opinions of sociologists. Phenomenologists believe that it is impossible to produce factual data and that it is therefore impossible to produce and check causal explanations. The most that sociologists can hope to do is to understand the meaning that individual give to particular phenomena. Phenomenologists do not try to establish what causes crime. Instead, they try to discover how certain events come to be defined as crimes and how certain people come to be defined as criminal. So phenomenologists therefore examine the way that police officers reach decisions about whether to arrest and charge suspect. In doing so, they hope to establish the meaning attached to the words crime and criminal by the police. The end product of the phenomenologist's research is an understanding of the meaning employed by members of society in their everyday life. Now we see the criticism of phenomenology. So basically it completely lacks objectivity. Interpretation of subject attached with social phenomena may not be verified and permits speculation. Then it does not permit verification, universality and objectivity from the researcher. So now we see the conclusion of it. So the phenomenology is one of the least used perspective in sociology. Positivism always tended to develop itself as a science but phenomenology on the other hand creates lots of scope for subject. It is primarily used in philosophy to understand abstract phenomena but sociology which seeks objective do not permit subjective interpretation attached with the phenomena. Observation and verification are the key to sociology which is largely denied in phenomenology. Now we see the last topic that is ethnometrology. So ethnometrology is the most recent of all the theoretical perspective discussed so far. The term was coined by the American sociologist Harold Garfinkel who is generally regarded as its founder. Garfinkel's book Studies in Ethnometrology which provided the initial framework for the perspective was published in 1967. Roughly translated, ethnology means the study of the method used by people. It is concerned with the examining the methods and procedure employed by members of society to construct 
account for and give meaning to their social world. Ethnomythologists draw heavily on the European tradition of phenomenological philosophy and in particular acknowledge a debt to the ideas of the philosopher sociologist Alfred Schulz. So actually it is noted that whenever modern educated intellectual studies ordinary people, they often misjudge their method or understanding of their reality. Garfinkel was interested to understand that how people come to see the world. He realized that they were indulging in their deliberation with self-satisfaction of doing the right things. Ethnomythology tries to understand the ordered social reality which develops among the common man. He believes that ethnomythology refers to investigation of rational properties of illiteral primitive people which develops over the period. In every interaction, for their action, it explains the specific situation and context. Whatever they do, they have their own logic which give stability to the social order. Garfinkel believes by focusing on the tools and technology of the modern society should not be used to understand the rationality of a common man. They have their own methods to understand and maintain their social order. Ethnomythology used in a very limited manner in sociology because sociology is largely focused upon the modern society than pre-literate society. But sometimes modern societies require some data, methods and other material from the simple society especially for comparative studies and evolutionary social changes. In these cases, ethnomology remains helpful. Many ethnomethodologists begin with the assumption that society exists only in so far as members perceive its existence. With this emphasis on members' view of social reality, ethnomethodology is generally regarded as a phenomenological approach. Ethnomethodology is a developing perspective which contains a diversity of viewpoint. So thank you guys for listening to me and watching this video. Thank you.